Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make some custom video controls for your video files in Storyline 360, but this would also work in, in other versions of Storyline as well. So I've got a video on the slide here and I've got a play button that if I click it will start to play the video and pause and play and pause so we can stop and, and start the video. Now I know there are the built-in video controls in, in Storyline that puts the the, the video button underneath, uh, but we can't really customize that at all, and so we're sort of uh, locked into to using that particular style. So this way that I'm going to show you will let you make your own control buttons, pos position them wherever you like, make them a little bit bigger, uh, and it just uses a few triggers to make that happen. So let's see how we do it. So I've come back to my slide uh, of which I've started to set up. So I've put a video on the slide. And when I click on the video and I go to the video tool options tab, what I need to do is just make sure that the setting for playing the video is when triggered. Okay, and we don't want to use the video controls underneath the video. Okay, so that's important because we're going to be making our own objects and triggers. I've also put a couple of, I've just put circle shapes onto the slide. One and I've called play in the timeline, the other pause. And the actual icons that I've used there, uh, I could have used the, the uh, content library, but I've actually inserted a symbol in, in there. Uh, the, you, there's like wingdings and webdings. Um, they have some, some symbols, so I've used those as my symbols on my buttons. So now what I need to do is just trigger them to, to function the way that I want. So I'll start with the play button and all I need to do is a new trigger to of an action of I want to play media on the slide and I want to play my video when the user clicks my play button. And conversely, I want to have an action of pausing the media when the user click, uh, sorry, the media is my video when the user clicks the pause button. And then okay, so that'll be my playing and my pausing of my video. Now in the, the demo that we just saw, it looked like one button, but these two buttons were actually overlaid on top of one another to create that effect. So you could leave them separated on the slide like that if you wanted to, but I wanted to create the effect of it changing from playing to pausing. So I'll set up the triggers and then I'll, I'll position the button. So I've made these buttons exactly the same size and I'll position them a little bit later. But I'm going to need some, some triggers uh, on here because uh, when I put them together, um, I actually don't want the, the uh, pause button to be visible initially. So what I'm going to do is click on the pause button, go to the states tab, but I'm going to set the initial state of that button to be hidden. Okay, so I'm only going to see one button uh, at a time. So this is where I'll start to need some triggers, and the triggers are going to revolve around that when I hit the play button, I've already got the, the actual functionality set up, but when I hit the play button, I want this button to disappear, and I want the pause button to become visible. And then I need another couple of triggers that when I click on the pause button, I want it to disappear, and I want the play button to then be showing. So let's put those triggers on. So we'll start with our, our play button. So I want to change the state of my play button to hidden when the user clicks it. Okay, so that'll make it disappear. And then what I it'll disappear, but I then I need to change the state of my pause button to normal when the user clicks play. So the play button will disappear and then the pause button will become visible. And then I just need to do the reverse of that. So on my pause button, <clears throat> I'll need a trigger to change the state of my pause button to hidden when the user clicks, clicks it, so it'll disappear. And then another trigger to change the state of my, paw, my play button to normal when the user clicks pause. So they're clicking on the button, it's disappearing, and the other one's becoming visible. That's what we're doing here. Okay, now is where I can move, merge the buttons together. So I'll drag my pause button along to let's say roughly in the, the center of the video. And I'll put the play button that's exactly the same size directly over the, the top. I need to clean that up a little bit. And then if we do a, just a quick preview of the slide, we can see that working. 
So we hit play, our video plays, the button changes to hidden and this one because the pause button is visible. We're pausing the video and it's also changing it to hidden. So it looks like it's the one button, but it's actually two buttons that are one controlling the playing and the pausing of the video, but secondly, one button is hiding the other and, and making um, hiding itself and making the other visible and vice versa, hiding itself and making the other one visible. So obviously you can play around with different styles and, and what you want your play and pause buttons to look like, but, but using two separate objects overlaid with different triggers on them can create the effect that it's just the one button. Plus with this, what I like about it is that I can make the button as large or as I like, position it wherever I like, uh, and I'm controlling it with the triggering. Well, that's it for this demo, creating custom video controls. I'll see you next time.